Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science, your weekly source for the latest science news. In the headlines this week, a new tyrannosaur species has been discovered that rewrites the evolution of these tyrant reptiles. A new species of long-necked sauropod dinosaur has been found in Argentina and much more. Our top story this week is the discovery of a new species of tyrannosaur that has rewritten scientists' understanding of how these iconic reptiles evolved. The new species is known from a couple of partial skeletons unearthed in Mongolia in the early 1970s that had remained misidentified since 1977. Now, however, paleontologists have been able to study the skeletons and demonstrate that they belong to a previously unknown Tyrannosaur species. They've named it Carnlulu mongoliensis, meaning the Dragon Prince from Mongolia. Carnlulu is an incredibly significant discovery, as it represents a sort of intermediate Tyrannosaur that sheds considerable light on how these tyrants rose to dominate prehistoric ecosystems. Furthermore, it shifts some of the relationships of Tyrannosaur lineages to one another. Kankulu itself was a medium-sized Tyrannosaur, measuring approximately 4 metres, or roughly 13 feet in total length. And it has been estimated to weigh 750 kilograms, which is around 1,650 pounds. So not exactly on the same scale as its massive relatives that lived much later. Kanlulu was found in rocks that date to between approximately 92 and 83 million years ago, whereas the famous T. rex lived millions of years afterwards, between about 73 and 66 million years ago. Tyrannosaurus rex was undoubtedly the apex predator of North American terrestrial ecosystems at the very end of the Cretaceous period. And over in Asia, Tarbosaurus batar filled a similar role. However, these giant tyrannosaurs evolved from much smaller ancestors that were far from the top predators of their ecosystems. At that time, other theropod dinosaur groups, such as the Allosauroids, were the top dogs, and medium-sized tyrannosaurs like Kankulu would have served as mid-level predators instead. The mid-grade tyrannosaurs have historically been poorly understood, as they are not known from the most complete remains. However, paleontologists have now been able to compare the anatomy of Khan Lulu's bones with those of other tyrannosaurs and to conduct a more comprehensive analysis of the dinosaurs' evolutionary relationships. More notably, they have discovered that a group of tyrannosaurs that existed from 70 to 66 million years ago called the Aleoramans, are in fact much closer relatives of T. rex than we had previously thought. This is especially intriguing because the Aleoramans are quite lightly built tyrannosaurs with very long, slender snouts, unlike the incredibly robust and massive T. rex and Tarbosaurus. As such, they have usually been considered to represent a lineage that diverged much earlier in time. However, these new results instead suggest that both the T. rex lineage and the Aleoramans are highly derived tyrannosaurs that both specialised in different ways. The study also discusses the contrasting mechanisms by which these tyrannosaur groups evolved their body plans. Whereas the Aleoramans likely experienced pedomorphosis, in which juvenile characteristics were retained in adult forms, the T. rex lineage probably underwent paramorphosis, accelerated growth that enabled them to achieve much more massive dimensions. And to top it all off, this new discovery also elucidates just how the Tyrannosaurs may have travelled between continents throughout their evolutionary history. The researchers suggest that the mid-grade Tyrannosaurids like Kankulu that were living in Asia towards the beginning of the late Cretaceous experienced a dispersal event to North America between 91 and 86 million years ago. That's dispersal A. Subsequently, these North American tyrannosaurs underwent a significant radiation in a relatively short time span, giving rise to familiar species such as Albertosaurus, Gorgosaurus and Dasplettosaurus, and various others. Then one branch of these North American tyrannosaurs dispersed back into Asia between 79 and 78 million years ago. That's dispersal B. 
After this, the Aliyaramans and the T-Rex lineage branched off, before the lineage leading to T-Rex itself travelled back into North America once more, and that's Dispersal C. So this study refines our understanding of how the Tyrannosaurs diversified across continents, showing that their dispersals were, in fact, less sporadic and less frequent than previous studies had estimated. A brilliant new discovery, and what a fascinating new view of Tyrannosaur evolution we have, thanks to Khan Cooley. Also in this week's paleontology news, we've got another new dinosaur. Meet Astigmasaura genuflexa, a new kind of sauropod dinosaur from Argentina. This species is known from a decent amount of the skeleton, including most of the hind limbs, some of the hip bones, and a partial tail. It's helped to inform scientists about the evolution of a particularly intriguing family of long-necked dinosaurs called Rabacosauridae. This lineage existed from the end of the Jurassic period until partway through the Cretaceous, and they've been found all across the globe. However, they are most diverse in South America. Astigmasaura lived towards the end of these dinosaurs' time on Earth, indicating that Rabacosaurids were even more diverse during their final stage than we previously realised. Astigmasaura was uncovered from the Huincul Formation, a geological formation renowned for being where Argentinosaurus was discovered, potentially the largest dinosaur to ever walk the Earth. Because this new dinosaur preserves the posterior part of the skeleton so well, it's also enabled paleontologists to investigate some of the musculature of the Rabacosaurid tail, and to enhance our understanding of tail posture in these dinosaurs. A truly fascinating discovery. In other news, a study published in the journal Cell Genomics has used mice to better understand the biology of Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD. Using a new, more efficient method of changing the genome of embryonic stem cells, a bank of these stem cells from mice was created that contained the cell mutations that have been the most strongly associated with ASD. This particular technique that the team used to produce the cells they wanted began development 12 years ago, and now the team has been able to use their hard work to, for the first time, begin to find the precise genetic mechanisms that are behind ASD. One of the findings made by the team is a reduced ability for neurons to eliminate misshapen proteins. So this is a particularly interesting discovery and will help researchers better understand how ASD works from a biological perspective. Importantly, the genetic variants studied are also implicated in disorders such as schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. So understanding how protein-neuron interaction can shape these disorders can help develop more effective drug treatments in the future. In some more cosmic news, a study from a couple of weeks ago has come up on our radar, and it involves some fairly impressive detections of its own. NASA's ANITA, or A-N-I-T-A, experiment consists of a range of instruments flown on massive balloons that float high above the surface of Antarctica. The goal here is to detect elusive radio waves emitted from distant cosmic events, theoretically able to give us an insight into events further away than any telescope can currently see. The signals it's picked up here are unusual in that they came from a rather steep angle, so steep, in fact, that they came from below the horizon, so it will have passed through thousands of kilometres of rock. Two other detectors, the Ice Cube Experiment and the Pierre Auger Observatory, failed to detect the particles that had travelled through the ice. This pretty much rules out that these particles are neutrinos, particles emitted from some of the most high-energy events in the universe, including supernovas and the Big Bang itself. The anomalous signal is still a mystery to scientists who have tried to match it up with known signals and events and are unable to. They hope that another detector, the PUEO, can shed light on what this mysterious signal is. Finally, in the news this week, a study has examined the impact of ships anchoring on Antarctic seabeds. Over the years, Antarctic waters have seen an increasing number of ships visiting the area, particularly tourist vessels. The 2022 to 2023 season recorded the highest passenger numbers ever, with 70,000 people landing in Antarctica from 70 tourism vessels. The paper details how the fragile seabed is damaged by the anchors and chains of these ships, 
as well as by research and fishing vessels. Observations showed striations from chains, scour marks from anchors, resuspended sediment and deposited mud resulting from the return of anchors or chains to the surface. Little to no marine life was found at these sites, instead crushed sponge colonies were noted, whereas marine life flourished directly adjacent to the anchoring sites. Many species in anchorable depths in Antarctica are slow-growing, immobile and endemic, making them particularly vulnerable to disturbances, with recovery estimated to take decades. The authors recommend establishing a database to record annual anchorages per site to understand the full scope of anchoring impacts. To reduce harm, vulnerable nearshore environments should be identified and protected by prohibiting anchoring there. Another strategy would be to establish permanent or seasonal subsurface moorings at frequently used sites. An interesting and very important study about the dangers that face this incredible ecosystem. Well, that's it for the news this week. I really hope you've enjoyed everything that's happened in these last seven days of science. Be sure to email us at sevendos.stories at gmail.com if you have any research you'd like to see us cover or if you want to let us know how we can improve the show. You can follow Seven Days of Science on Instagram and TikTok and also be sure to support us on Patreon if you enjoy what we do here. You can also follow me on Instagram at Miss Amelia Evans and I might have a YouTube channel coming out soon. Thank you so much for your patience today. I've recently moved a couple counties away. So the setup, the background, the audio, my eyes flicking up and down, the camera quality, everything is temporary. Thank you so much for enjoying and being patient. This is all going to change eventually as we update and settle into our new home. As always, a big thank you to our patrons, including Andrew Cowam, Chippy Chippy Chapa Chapa, Clara Middleton, Dean A. Batha, Diana Hernandez, Drav Strivastava, Gabriella, Gary Arrington, Giotis, I Rage, John French, Joseph Ree, Corey Peterson, Lena Rose, Mark Nevin, Matt Grandis, Mendicant Fryer, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Ralph Balzac, Robert Piekazik Jr., Robert Thomas, Sammy Potricus, Schlum, Staniforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Thomas F. Conroy III, Timothy and Tedro, and Troy Schmidt. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week.